It's GC's IELTS Conversations. Today, a part two monologue question. Describe an elderly friend, not a blood relative. Not a blood relative. It reminds me of uh, vampires or Dracula. Not enough blood! <laughs> it's kind of funny how um, all of those vampire movies, especially Dracula, Speaking in a Russian accent or a Slavic accent? Okay, let's get one thing straight. Dracula is not from Russia. I believe Dracula was from Romania. That's, that's correct, yeah? Okay, let's stop being silly and start today's practice. Grab a drink, find somewhere comfortable to relax, and let's do some study and talking. Now, note on these uh, part two, or I should say, to be more helpful, task two. Many people say task two, which is more helpful because uh, people don't always say part two for these questions. So IELTS task two questions. Okay, you can say part two if you want to. Note on all of these uh, question cards, we have what are called helping questions and the main question. So the main question is, describe an elderly friend, not a blood relative. Then we have the helping questions. How often do you see this person? When you first met him or her, what they do in their daily life, and explain what you think or feel about this person. These are all helping questions. The main question is describe an elderly friend, not a blood relative. What I want to say about these helping questions is that they are not compulsory. There is no rule anywhere in the IELTS training guidelines that says you must answer all of these helping questions. They are called helping questions because they are just there to help you to help you get some ideas on what to talk about, to help you brainstorm. So let's look at the first helping question in any case. Again, you don't need to do this. It's just there to help you. How often you see this person? Now, this is obviously a question about frequency. And we have these words here, which are frequency words. Um, there are many internet sites that even give some type of... Uh, quota for how people may interpret frequency words. We have frequency words like always, usually, normally, generally, often, frequently, sometimes, occasionally, seldom, hardly ever, or rarely, or never. On a website that I found, somebody wrote always means 100%, usually 90%, normally or generally 80%, Often or frequently, 70%. Sometimes, 50%. Occasionally, 30%. Seldom, 10%. Hardly ever or rarely, 5%. And finally, never, 0%. Well, they're all very helpful, but let's try and move on. For this question, let's use usually. I usually see her in the local supermarket or when she's doing her garden. That's pretty good, but why? <laughs> we should add some more information because the answer is a bit too short. Remember, this is a monologue where you need to be speaking for about two minutes. So let's add some more information with some why information. Why, what's the problem or reason? The reason could be about you because he lives some distance away from you. Or you could say, he lives some distance away from me. The reason could be about the other person, because she's involved in many outside activities. Or very real, because she spends time doing things with her husband, children, and grandchildren. We have this kind of stereotype that many elderly people are widowed, their husband or wife has died, but of course it's not always the case. We need to remember that they might still be doing many, many things with their husband or wife when they are elderly. But of course, many people have uh, children and even grandchildren. 
So the complete story, or the complete sentence in this part of the story, this part of your monologue, may be, I usually see her in the local supermarket or when she's doing her garden. We don't have much more contact because she spends time doing things with her husband, children and grandchildren. Now let's move to uh, question number two. When you first met him or her? That's a when question, obviously, but any answer you give may or could only last a few seconds. For example, I met her about five years ago. Not very long. I met her in November when we moved into the street where she lives. Or better, what were you or him doing when you met? We met about five years ago when he offered to help me with my garden. We met about five years ago when he was watering his garden. That's what information. What was happening? You needed your garden help. He needed his garden help. <laughs> you saw him gardening. He saw you gardening. Something like that. Let's make this longer by introducing some ongoing when information. The when information about not long ago, but the when information about what's still happening today and what will probably happen in the future. We met about five years ago when he was watering his garden. Ongoing when information. He usually waters his front yard garden on Saturday mornings. Note I gave a location, the front yard garden. Location is also where information. We can introduce a why. For example, we met about five years ago when he was watering his garden. He usually waters his front yard garden on Saturday mornings. Why? And a new sentence. On Saturdays, I always get up and go for an early morning walk, so we had to meet eventually. Most students will try to put the why on the subject. If you did this here, it could very easily become a very boring sentence. For example, he usually waters his garden on Saturday mornings. Why? Because he likes gardening. That is a very boring sentence. I mean, if he doesn't like gardening, he can just stay in bed. Many times it's better to put the why on you. For example, why? On Saturdays, I always get up and go for an early morning walk, so we had to meet eventually. That's part of the reason why you met him. So it's okay to talk about yourself just for a moment. But don't digress. Don't keep talking about yourself, your life, your history, your destiny. Otherwise, the answer becomes more about you than the question. Still address the question. The reason why you met him is because you get up early on Saturday mornings, not just because he or she was doing his gardening every Saturday or Sunday morning. I'm sure you get the idea. Now let's move on to question number three. What they do in their daily life. This question is actually more difficult than it seems. Most people can gather enough information to answer questions one and two. But you could be surprised how many people have no idea what the other person does in his or her daily life. You may have some idea, and maybe you do want to tackle the question to, to really try to answer it from the perspective of the other person. But because so many people really have no idea about what the other person does, apart from maybe watering their garden or some very uh, superficial information like that, it's maybe better to uh, know about a strategy or use a strategy to enable yourself to answer this question in a meaningful or at least a lengthy manner where you can speak for long enough. So the strategy or approach here is just to create a story. When you don't have the information, create a story. To create a story here, I'm going to talk about what you want to do every day when you are an elderly person. What you can imagine yourself doing every day when you are an elderly person. 
So although it may appear that you are still talking about the subject, the old man or woman in your story, you are really imagining about your later years in life. When she's not in her garden, I think she spends a lot of time at the airport, as I often see her parachuting over our house and looking at her garden from 500 feet in the sky. That's really using your imagination. Again, it's imagining what you want to do when you are an old man or old lady, but applying it to the other person in your story, because frankly, you really don't know what they do every day. Or maybe a more down-to-earth answer could be, I often see her packing a picnic lunch into the boot of her daughter's car, so I think that she does a lot of outside activities. Note that in this sentence I am stating a fact, followed by an opinion. The fact is you see her packing a picnic lunch into the boot of her daughter's car. The opinion is that you think she does a lot of outside activities. And of course that's true. You've already spoken about her doing gardening. Fact plus opinion and also fact plus general observation are two great ways to add time to your IELTS Part 2 monologues. So try to get into the habit of when you have offered a fact, follow it up by offering your opinion. Or when you've offered a fact, follow it up by offering a general observation. Well, time for a breath. <sighs> That's all we have time for today. Thank you very much for your time. Excellent work, and I will see you again very soon.